Hi. Um, I am Alex Hartman from the Ada Community Library, and this is my um, my story time partner, Cruz, and he's on his eggplant phone, so he may not be available, but we're gonna um, read some stories. And I am going to start with this one called Clem and Crab. Let's see. <laughs> Can we go this way? Clem loved the beach, the crunch of the wet sand, the crashing of the waves, the grass that grew sideways as the wind blew in off the sea, and the pools that came and went with the changing tides. Tide pools are my favorite too. She would collect the treasures that washed ashore, but also the things that other people had left behind. Things like what? Garbage, yeah. Treasure. Treasure, maybe. One day, as she was gathering everything in her bucket, she spied a flash of orange. Then again, what was it? It was a crab. The crab watched her as it crawled under, over, and in between the rocks. But later, as she was ready to head back with her bucket full, crab had disappeared. Clem smiled as she told her sister about the crab, how they'd played hide and seek among the rocks. Together, they sorted through her treasures, one pile to put back, the other to be recycled. There were shells and pebbles and pieces of glass that glistened like precious jewels, but also brightly colored plastic lids, bottles and netting, and even a plastic bag. The bag felt heavy. As Clem looked inside, she glimpsed a flash of orange. It was Crab, his claw stuck in the twisted plastic. Gently, she untangled him. Can I keep him, Clem pleaded. No, Clem, he belongs in the sea, her sister said. Sadly, she headed back across the beach to the pool of water. Plop, with a small splash, Crab was gone. Be careful, Cl Crab, Clem called. The sun was setting as Clem and her sister caught the bus home. Clem looked back at the beach and thought of Crab. Bye-bye, she whispered. Ouch! Clem felt something nip her leg. Crab! Somehow he had nestled in her pants leg. She couldn't believe it as she quickly plopped him in, or popped him into her pocket. You'll be safe with me, she told him. Back at home, Clem found a bowl and filled it with seawater and stones from the garden to make a new home for Crab. Then she took all the things she had collected from the beach to use on her project for show and tell. What did she make? A crab. I like his pinchers. I like his pinchers too. <laughs> the following day, Clem and Crab paid a visit to the aquarium. As they walked beneath the magical underwater world, Clem wondered if Crab missed his home. They learned lots of facts about conservation, the huge problem of plastics in the ocean, and what we can do to help. With a head full of facts and crab carefully hidden in her bag, it was time for Clem's show and tell. She told the class all that she had learned at the aquarium and explained how her collage was made from the plastic waste she'd gathered from the beach. We can all help to protect the oceans and the shores. Lots of small actions added together can make a big difference, she explained. Suddenly, Crab scuttled across the classroom floor. Don't be scared, she told her classmates. This is Crab. I rescued him from a plastic bag. His claw was tangled and he was stuck. But why didn't you put him back? asked Clem's teacher. I did, but he found me again. The beach is messy and dangerous. I try my best to keep it clean, but it's a big job, she replied. Clem's teacher smiled and told her that everything she was doing was great but that Crab would be much happier in his natural environment. Clem knew her teacher was right. She would have to take him back to the beach. That weekend, Clem and her sister took the bus back to the beach. This was usually Clem's favorite time of the week, but today she felt a bit sad. When they arrived, Clem simply couldn't believe her eyes. There on the sand were her classmates, all helping to clean up the beach. I made a difference, she called. We can all make a difference. As she skipped across the beach, hearing the crunch of the wet sand and the crash of the waves, she was the happiest she had ever been. Whoa, a sailboat. The sunlight danced and glittered on the surface of Crab's rock pool. With one, oh, with one last glance and a snap of his claws, Crab was gone. I'll see you again, Crab, she called. Be safe. 
Clem felt proud. She'd helped make his home safe and clean. Mm. This beautiful beach with its endless skies and magical underwater worlds that came and went with the tides. Clem made a promise that she would always look after it and for Crab, or for Crab and all the other sea creatures. The end. Hmm. I like that. Are you still on your eggplant phone? Oh my gosh. You've been on hold for a long time. Hope they can get to you soon. All right, well, I've got a song, meanwhile, and I'll need your help with this song, Cruz. You think you can help? It's a tongue twister. Do you know what a tongue twister is? It's something that's really hard to say. Um, tongue twister. Tongue twister. Tongue twister is kind of a tongue twister itself. Alright, so here's an example of a tongue twister. Um, toy boat. Can you say toy boat? Toy boat. Toy boat. Pretty good. Can you say it multiple times? Multiple times. Yeah, I'll show. <laughs> so multiple times means like several times. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna sing toy boat. Um, and toy boat is gonna be the word or will be the words to the song. Toy boat, 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 toy boat. Can you sing? Toy boat, 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 toy boat. All right, here's another one, and you can challenge you, your family and friends, to try out these tongue twisters. This one is Unique New York. It goes like this: Unique New York, 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 Unique. Kind of an expert at tongue twisters because I've had a lot of practice. But maybe if you were singing along at home, you said "unique new Nork." That's all right if you did. All right, let's try a harder one. She sells seashells by the seashore. 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 Whew, that one's tough. Okay, this is the toughest one though. Freshly fried fat flying fish, freshly fried fat flying fish, freshly fried fat flying fish, freshly fried fat flying fish. How did you do? Can you say, can you say freshly fried fat flying fish? <laughs> All right. Now that we've had lots of practice here in a home, let's try, try it faster. Can you, can you do it fat, super fast? Toy boat, 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 toy Freshly fried fat flying fish, freshly fried fat flying fish, freshly fried fat flying fish, freshly fried fat flying fish. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. That's so fun. Okay, let's read one more story, shall we? Hop up. Oh. <laughs> okay, this one is called Not Quite Snow White. For Tamika, it was always the right time and place to dance and sing. Tamika had a hip-rolling happy dance, a swayful sad dance, a stomping mad dance, and a hair-flicking just because she felt fabulous dance. She sang high with the tweeting birds and low with the croaking frogs. She always shared her love of music and movement with an audience, stuffed and unstuffed. Tamika loved the stage. It was her perfect place. She was the star of every show, and she loved every show that she starred in. She'd been a cucumber, a space cowgirl, a dinosaur, and her favorite part, a singing mermaid. On stage, Tamika felt like she could be anything or anyone she wanted to be, but she had never been a princess. Now she would finally have her chance. 
Tamika was so excited that she went to both days of auditions for the Snow White musical. On the first day, she arrived super early. She helped her friend, or friends with their lines, kept count for the dancers, and shooed butterflies from nervous tummies so songs could be sung. She's helpful. After the audition, Tamika heard some of the other kids whispering, she can't be Snow White. She's too tall. She's much too chubby. And she's too brown. Tamika looked at her legs. They were long. Maybe the kids were right. A princess shouldn't be taller than our prince, should she? She looked at her belly. Maybe what the kids said was, tr kids said was true. She could not remember any chubby princesses. Tamika looked at her skin. She was brown. How could a girl with brown skin play a princess like Snow White? Could those kids be wrong? Maybe she was wrong for wanting to be this princess. Tamika slouched and sucked in her belly. She tried pulling down her sleeves, but there was no getting around being brown. For the first time, she didn't feel like dancing or singing. At dinner, Tamika didn't tap her feet or cheek, clang rhythms with her spoon. Something wrong, asked her mom. The other kids said, I'm too tall, too chubby, and too brown. I'm not right for Snow White, said Tamika. You got it all wrong, mom says. Said, You're, you are tall enough, chubby enough, and brown enough to be a perfect princess. Besides, said her dad, Snow White is just pretend. You've always been my real princess. You're just enough of all the right stuff. He kissed her forehead. Tamika smiled. Maybe her parents were on to something. I think they are. At the audition the next day, Tamika watched all the other kids get on stage and do their best. It was Tamika's turn at last. She remembered what her parents had said, but her long legs were still a little jittery. She closed her eyes and imagined that she was singing and dancing for her favorite audience of friends, stuffed and unstuffed. Then she remembered the joy she felt when performing. Tamika knew she could do it. And she did. She shone like the star that she was. She could act, she could dance, she could sing. She loved herself as much as she loved the music and movement. Tamika was a perfectly poised princess. When her audition was over, Tamika looked out to smiling faces. Tamika wasn't too much of anything. Maybe she was just enough of all the right stuff. She did get to be the princess. She earned the part. Are you still on the phone? Oh my gosh. You've been on hold forever. Well, thank you for joining us. Um, I have a special, um, very interesting bug to show you that we found a couple of days ago. So we're gonna take a look at a super interesting bug. That is a sphinx moth caterpillar. Does it have a sharp horn? Yeah, so one of the one of the names for this caterpillar is the tomato hornworm. And it's because you often find them on a tomato plant. And you recognize that big horn. What are the horns for? Well, I'm not sure what what they use them for. He's kind of biting. <laughs> Wiggly. He's kind of biting. He was biting you. Yeah, they have pretty pretty strong jaws. A pretty formidable looking jaws. Oh. <laughs> no, his back is pinching. Yeah. But this caterpillar will turn into a sphinx moth, which is about the size of a um, a hummingbird, and they beat their wings really really rapidly, also like a hummingbird. Daddy, um, uh, where do you hold them so they don't bite you? Well, I don't know, um, where you hold them so that, it, that they don't bite you. I just put him on that, or put, put it on that straw so that I could carry it over to, to show you. Isn't that an incredible bug, though? How come they, how come the, how come they 
they have draws? What are the draws for? Well, they what are they predominantly eat? for eating. They eat leaves. They eat the leaves from tomato plants, and they. Um, you also see them on a um, a, a wildflower out in the desert. I've seen them on a wildflower, and I forget what the name of the wildflower is. What kind? Um, Evening primrose. That's that's the wildflower that you find them on sometimes. All right, what an amazing bug! Thanks for joining us for story time. It was delightful to read to you, and we'll see you next week. Bye.